We acknowledge and respect the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional custodians of this land since time immemorial. We are learning that the land is not ours to own, but to look after, and that if we listen, we may hear in it the calling of the eternal spirit. Responding to this call, we commit ourselves to work for justice, reconciliation, and care of the earth. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born, this day in the city of David, a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, for me, Christmas is, in large part, about the singing. Is that true for you? all those special songs that we only sing at this time of year. Of course, there are some Christmas songs that if I never heard them again, I wouldn't be unhappy. Jingle Bell Rock comes to mind and any song with snow in it. But there are other songs that I couldn't do without, songs that evoke Christmas as strongly as the smell of pine needles in the living room. Songs that tell the story of what Christmas is all about, but also help form its cultural history and substance for me. Music can take us far and deep into memory and feeling, can't it? When I was young, I was a boy soprano in my school choir and we sang the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah for an ABC TV broadcast. As a result, that music is in me deep. I can't sing the soprano part anymore, but each year when I first hear Christmas music being piped in the supermarket, usually around mid-November, I immediately download the Messiah to my phone and play the whole thing on constant repeat until Christmas, thereby bathing myself in my childhood Christmas memories and pleasures. Christmas in the Bible has lots of songs in it too. The extended Christmas story, as told in Luke's Gospel, contains Mary's song, Zechariah the father of John the Baptist's song, and Simeon the prophet's song. And then there is that one tiny little song, two short lines of poetry that come at the climax of today's reading with the announcement of Jesus' birth. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and singing what? Singing what? Here's Handel's version. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, good will towards men. Assuming that men here includes women and anyone else who identifies as a human being. All the lyrics in Handel's Messiah are quotations from the King James Version of the Bible, the first official English translation from the year 1611. We use a modern translation of the Bible here, one that updates the archaic language of the King James. However, when we heard those verses just now, 
we heard not just an update of the language, but a quite different meaning. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom God favours. And look, quite frankly, apart from the archaic non-inclusive use of maleness for humanity, I much prefer the King James Version. We've got all humankind versus the people divinely favoured by God. It's universal versus conditional, inclusive versus exclusive. The modern, and according to biblical scholars, correct translation leads us to ask, who is favoured by God? And who is out of favour? What a jolly question to be asking on Christmas Day. Who is in and who is out with God? Now, spoiler alert, the answer is no one is left out, no one is excluded. But how do we know that? Especially given that so much of Christianity is conducted in an exclusive way, making judgments about insiders and outsiders on the basis of moral uprightness, sexual orientation, believing the right things in the right way. It all makes me wonder to what extent God really is like Santa. I mean, we all know that Santa only brings gifts to good children, only the deserving. Although, that being said, I've heard children being threatened with Santa's moral judgment upon them. But I'm not aware of a single example of Santa ever following through on any of those threats. I mean, have any of you ever got a lump of coal from Santa? Luke's Gospel seems to say that peace on earth comes only to those whom God favours. Only some get to experience that peace. And that taps unhelpfully into stereotypes of judgmental Christians nominating those whom God approves of. And I don't like it. And the fact that it is sung by a choir of angels only adds insult to injury. But as with every single word in the Bible, context is everything. Let's jump back a few short verses before this song. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Christmas joy is for all the people. The Bible is frequently misread as saying that God privileges some people or nations over others. But that misreading comes as a result of the fact that God's word of world transforming peace didn't come to everyone at once, but to some people first and everyone else through them. It's like the way we always acknowledge the traditional indigenous custodians of our land here at Brunswick Uniting Church, the first peoples, not because they are more privileged, more favoured, on the contrary, but because they were the first to love this amazing land, which we are still working out how to share peacefully with them. The Bible is misread when its overarching theme of universal peace is overlooked. And it's there from the start. God said to Noah and his family, when I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember my everlasting covenant of peace that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Abraham and Sarah, I will bless you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed with peace. Jesus inherits this blessing. As God says to the prophet Isaiah, I will give you as a light to all the nations that my salvation, my peace may reach to the end of the earth even as far as Australia. But what about all the wrongdoers, sinners, unjust and evil people out there, the ones I don't like? You know, doesn't God rightly have a burning pit of exclusion and rejection for them? Well, actually, when we read the Gospels, we find that the so-called sinners and tax collectors, the outsiders and excluded ones of Jesus' world, are the most favoured. Jesus says, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. 
who is excluded from God's favour, from the love that reaches out to the world from the Bethlehem stable. Not one person, not one creature, not one atom of earth's goodness. Which isn't to say that God's peace is simply just rolling effortlessly on to encompass the earth like a coronavirus. No, there is much in us and around us that fights against the light of peace shining from the manger. We do make hard divisions between insiders and outsiders, those we favour and those we don't, those who look, think and act like us and those who don't. And in our heart of hearts, we may not always feel worthy of God's love ourselves. We may feel distant from God's peace. But Jesus comes not to judge us, not to reject us, but to heal our brokenness, to love the world into wholeness. So let's join in the angels' song today, their great carol of universal love. Let's sing out the joy of the birth of peace for every creature, for the whole earth. Let's sing it with our living into every place of division and exclusion until God's will is done on earth as in heaven and the glorious light of peace shines in every heart. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel, be born in us today. Amen. Go in peace with a blessing from the source of Christmas love through the child in the manger by the Spirit who sings joy. <laughs>